In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the correlation coefficient using Excel. Now, there's another video I created about this topic, particularly how to do it by hand. If you go to the YouTube search bar, type in correlation coefficient organic chemistry tutor, it should come up. But now let's focus on how to do it in Excel. So we have three data sets. We're going to find it for each one, and then we're going to describe the relationship of X and Y within each data set. So to find a correlation coefficient, type in equal corel, open with parenthesis. Now we need to select the first array. It really doesn't matter what order you choose it. You can start with X or you can start with Y. The answer will still be the same. So let's go ahead and choose the X values. Press comma and then select the Y values. Now let's close the parentheses and then press enter. So that is our R value, the correlation coefficient. So let's just call this R. So what does this number mean? 0.998. Here's what we need to know. When R is equal to one or very close to one, it means that the relationship is positive. When R is close to negative one, it means you have a strong uh, negative correlation. If R is equal to zero, there is no correlation between X and Y. So because R is very, very close to one, there is a strong positive correlation. And just looking at the data set, we could see Y. As X increases from one to six, y increases from 2 to 14. And every time, y is increasing somewhere between 2 and 3. So we have a nice relationship between x and y. As x increases, y increases. So that indicates a positive linear relationship. That's why r is close to positive 1. Now let's move on to the second data set. So let's get our R value, our correlation coefficient. We're going to follow the same process. So equal corel. And let's choose the Y values this time for the first array. And then we'll press comma. Next, we'll choose the X values. Now, if we did it the other way, it will still be the same. If we choose the X values first, and then the Y values, we still get the same result. So the order doesn't matter. But now what can we say about the relationship between X and Y in data set number two? Notice that it's very close to negative one. So what we have is a strong linear relationship, but with a negative slope. So we could say it's negative. And when we look at the data, as X increases from one to six, Y decreases at a fairly steady rate. During the first two points, it decreases by three, and then it decreases by four, then by three, by three, in this case, by five. So somewhere between three to five, it decreases every unit that X increases by. So that's a strong a negative relationship between X and Y. Now let's move on to data set number three. So let's begin by calculating the correlation coefficient. Let's type in equal corel. Let's select the X values, comma, and then let's select the Y values. So what can we say about this number? Notice that R is not close to positive one. It's not close to negative one. In this case, R is very close to zero. That means that there is no relationship between X and Y. It's neither positive nor it's negative. It's simply just random. As X increases, Y is all over the place. It's increasing, it's decreasing, it's increasing, decreasing again, increasing, so 
if you were to draw a graph, the data points would be completely scattered. As you can see, you can't really draw a nice linear line for this particular chart. So now you know how to calculate the correlation coefficient, and now you know what these numbers represent. Thanks for watching.